Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Marco and today I will be watching Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 4 Episodes 13 and 14. Last set of episodes was really interesting to me because of few reasons, first being Okuyasu getting revenge for his brother, second reason is of course Red Hot Chili Pepper, I wanted to see that guy in action, he was always very calculated, very careful, and suddenly he became too cocky. He started thinking that he can take on uh, Josuke, but he was still a little bit afraid of Jotaro, so <laughs> Josuke was able to defeat him anyway. He was faster than Crazy Diamond, but uh, Josuke outsmarted him with that tire and coal tar strategies that was pretty cool. I really enjoyed the fight and Stand user of Red Hot Chili Pepper is cool as well, nice design, but my favorite part definitely was Josuke and Joseph holding hands when Joseph was about to fall, uh, Josuke caught him and they shared a special moment between father and son that was really touching, I'm so happy to see my boy Joseph still kicking and he finally got to meet his son man this is great and previous episode ended with that hand chopped off and it was bleeding some nasty shit man and we saw hand in episode number one so i'm starting to feel like there is something that we don't even know about yet so it's gonna be very very interesting without further ado let's jump into episode number 13 let's go guys all right let's begin Straight to the opening. Okay. Picking up something dangerous. Oh, Moria Radio again. Let's go. There is Joseph. And Jotaro. There it is. Bo and Daryl finally at our possession. It was at his place. Oh my god, bro. Yeah, he was scared before even from Jotaro. Jotaro-san, Speedwagon Foundation? Hmm. Why is Joseph alone there, though? There is more, 100%. <laughs> he changed. <laughs> he was shitting on Japanese coffee in part 3. <laughs> and it's not from Tonya. Oh, now that I think about it, does she know that Joseph is here? Oh, it seems like they didn't tell her. But then the age difference between Joseph and her is pretty evident. Yeah, it's not easy to deal with old people that have problems with hearing, memory, and stuff. Oh, they're going to Josuke's home. Oh, wow. Well, I'm sure she would be happy. Nice. Ah. Uh... I understand Josuke. It's not that easy to break that barrier. I kind of feel bad for Joseph, but I understand Josuke as well. <laughs> Come on, where is he? Long distance bus. What is that? Like another city or something? Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> right now it feels like Joseph is, is trolling him. 
What the fuck is going on? It seems like something is up with his pants. What the hell is going on? It looks like a ghost is pranking him or something. What the fuck is that? Yeah, it looks like tiny hand prints. And oh, it's a baby! Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I missed this. Oh, come on. Give me a break. Did dog sense that baby or something? Oh, shit. So it is legit a baby. So now I'm wondering... Is baby the stand user or... Someone turned baby invisible thanks to its stand power? Wow, man, this is super creepy, bro. Invisible baby. Six months. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Oh, Joseph thinks that baby is stand user. He doesn't realize. Wow, and it wouldn't be the first case of baby stand users, right? Death 13. So poor baby was probably shot with terror. What happened? Oh, what a nerd! Oh my god! <laughs> And it's invisible as well. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> what the fuck is this episode? Oh, crazy diamond. Okay. <laughs> How are they going to figure out who is the parent of the baby? <laughs> He's too ashamed to go into the store to shop for babies. I think. You better don't do anything fishy, buddy. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> he thought that Joseph needs diapers, man. Holy shit. Doesn't know. Doesn't know. Holy shit, man. That's gonna be so weird for him. Yeah, he's gonna think that it's a child abductor or something. Well, a rest in pepperonis, just to get savings. Oh my god. Is he going to take literally everything because he can't decide? That's pretty interesting. That would be cool for babies, not gonna lie. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh my god. It's so complex. 
ちくみのニュークワットフレトリマシてハハオヤのちくびに近くなっておりますしかもボニオの無時と同じに顎を切り返してくださいさっきちょのあなの形が丸穴ワイジ型十字型とございますがガイジャストストップギブヒムエブリ
really liked the last episode, man. Oh! Hazamada dude, right? Why is he acting so sus? <laughs> Asshole, bro. Oh, they are still trying to figure out that. Oh, Nice, they are talking about manga. Pink, Pink Dark Boy? <laughs> I pictured pink guy in my head. If you know, you know. Is that the writer of that, like, popular manga or something? What the fuck? <laughs> oh, they're so excited. I mean, it's kind of a big deal. So are we going to go on an adventure with these two? <laughs> 20 years old. <laughs> I have a feeling that something very bad is gonna happen. He might be a stand user. Here we go. What on earth? He looks dead, bro. Oh, he looks kinda cool, though. Just like a Red Hot Chili Pepper stand user. Yep. I mean, I would be annoyed as well if someone would leak my address if I was a popular manga writer. Mm. Oh, this is... Okay, this is too good to be true. Unless... It's gonna be something like... Similar to Tonya. That he's actually a good guy, but that they're trying to portray him as bad guy. <laughs> Look at them, bro. I can feel them, though. Like, if I was in, for example, Araki's house or Isayama's, man, I would be fucking geeking out as well. He's working by himself. Wow. Okay, I understand that. What on earth? He's fascinated by the spider. あ、どうすれば書けるか知ってるかね。うん。リアリティだよ。リアリティこそが作品に命を吹き込むエネルギーであり、リアリティこそがエンターテイメントなのさ。オッケー、アイキンカインドシーダット。想像や空想で書かれ
Oh my god. What the fuck? What the nerd is going on here? And now he's acting like nothing happened. Yeah, Koichi is starting to think that he is very sus. He's sensing something. Okay, okay, Koichi. Precisely. And stand users are drawn to each other. That is true. Surprisingly reasonable from Kazamada. Is that something that's not out yet? さっき仕事が終わったばかりと言っていたろ。俺さっきからするどくめつけといたのよ。完成し、ほやほやのピンクダークの少年の名前。おお、そうだ、これ <laughs> what is happening though? Compatible with you too. So she Heaven's door. So he is a stand user. What the fuck is that, bro? <laughs> like his hand became funny. Oh my god. What kind of crazy stand power is that? And it hits. It uh, fits perfectly with him because he is manga artist. So he can turn people into manga. Very interesting stand. I mean, stands in part 3 were interesting, but this in, these ones in part 4 are on a whole different level, man. I can't wait to see what, what is the purpose behind his stand, what can he do with it. Let's see, Morio Landmark number 5. Comics artist Ishibe Rohan's house. On location, 1 minute's walk from the Kotodai 2nd Street bus stop. Grounds, a mansion with an attic uh, situated on... A 340 square meters of land. Attempting to visit is futile since Rohan will pretend to be out. <laughs> okay, but Koichi and Hazamada are in right now. And poor Koichi got attacked by his stand. Kevin's door ability. What? Wow! So this is literally the line I can read you like a book in a literal sense. Holy shit, man. <laughs> is he trying to find some interesting stories? Yep, yep. Not press hospital in SCP. Oh, what the fuck? He can literally find out everything about the person. Oh yeah! Apex, that's right! He has ability, just like you. Stand. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, it was crazy. Oh my god, Yuka Kod. Kuyasu. Kobayashi, everything, bro. Oh, and he can see the stands. Wait, by taking memories, does he mean permanently? Because that's kind of dangerous, bro. 
。OK、こいち。レコーザークトツの音の攻撃を。あ、ないぞ。本当に攻撃するぞ。うるせえな。やってみろ。レコー、アクトツ。He's pretty confident. What the fuck? It was going in his direction, but it changed. Impossible for you to attack me. Save the law. What the hell is going on? I cannot bring harm to comic artist. Oh my god, bro. So if he writes something, it has to come true. Just like with Boingo and Boingo coming. This is crazy, bro. In fact, this is much better than Boingo and Boingo coming. Because he can write whatever the fuck he wants. Oh my god, this is crazy. Oh yeah, he, he was kind of nasty. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's totally different than with Kaichi. I'm poor guy. Yeah, but we can become even better, I guess. Oh, insulted him. Okay. Holy shit, that's actually cool. <laughs> Bruh, I don't know what to think of this guy. He's awesome, creepy, scary, cool, uh, all at the same time. And he's drippy. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Why do I have a feeling that that hurts so much? Even though that I cannot relate to that. Oh my god. If he took their memories, he can manipulate their memories as well. Did he made them forget about this? He's dangerous, bro. Wow, I fucking knew it, bro. What? It, it doesn't look any different at all. He weighs a little under 20 kilos, no way. This is so weird. I I am so confused right now. I know about memories, but why did he lose 20 kilos? It's his house. That's the place. Wait, what did he write in him to come again? See? His actions are totally different than his thoughts. He's being controlled, man. And this is so fucking creepy, guys, not gonna lie. Oh my god, Josuke no Kuyasu. Nice, nice. Leave it to his friends, man. They noticed something is off. Where is Hazama though? He doesn't need him, I guess. Wow, I fucking knew it, bro. He made him come here again. Holy shit, that was interesting. Okay, guys, that was my reaction to episodes 13 and 14 of Diamond is Unbreakable. I think that both of these episodes were so good. 
First of all, I'm glad that we get an episode where Joseph and Josuke hangs out together and they found this baby who is apparently a stand user and can become invisible and if baby touches something, it can turn invisible as well. Pretty scary power, especially for baby and uh, baby got lost thanks to that power. But that scene when uh, Joseph slit his wrist, I assume, that uh, he can change the color of the water and in the place where it is baby, it formed like this circle, like blood went to the sides and that allowed Josuke to find out where baby is. And that reminded me of old Joseph all the way from part 2 and made me feel so happy and proud and that moment that they shared together was fantastic. One of my favorite moments so far in part 4. Really amazing episode. And next one with this manga artist uh, Rohan Kishibe. He is fucking nuts, bro. I like his design. I like how he wants people to be satisfied and happy while reading his work. But he is pretty sus, bro. The way he licked that spider and stabbed him. Oh, it was so disgusting and... He is obsessed with reality and normal people lives, although uh, Koichi and Hazamada are uh, everything but not normal. I mean, they were normal until recently, I guess. But I'm still confused about his power and how it works. Okay, he can read people, he can write stuff, but why did Koichi lose 20 kilograms, like what the hell, that's so weird and there isn't a physical change, he doesn't look any thinner than he was before. And the fact that he came back to his mansion again and that line that he said uh, at the end of the episode makes me uh, think that he wrote already in Koichi that he needs to come back to him. I'm glad that Okuyasu and Josuke noticed that something is off with Koichi and they saw him entering the house, so next episode is going to be pretty wild, can't wait for it. I guess that's all for today, thank you guys for watching as always. If you enjoy my reactions, consider subscribing, leave a like, comment, all that good stuff as always. Also check out my Patreon page if you want to see full and early reactions. Link is in description. I will be seeing you very soon with another video. Until then, take care and have a nice day. See ya guys.